If you read that title, you're probably angry with me, or maybe you agree with me. So let's get into why I think Furiosa is the most overrated movie of the year. AKA, I was super disappointed, and I think I'm bumping my original score down. Notice I didn't post a review when it came out. And that's not because I was disappointed in the movie. That's because I have been busy. <laughs> but now it's on Max. Everybody can stream it. The movie bombed at the box office. There's reports that maybe the budget wasn't as big as we thought, and maybe it made more of a profit than we thought, but it didn't do as well as it should have. And that's unfortunate. Now, Mad Max Fury Road was incredible. One of the better or best action movies of the last decade. Now, I had some critiques of Mad Max Fury Road, of mainly just some visual things, but I thought it was a phenomenal movie. But I also am one, I think, of many who never asked for a prequel about Furiosa. When I watch a Mad Max movie, I really enjoy the world. But the fact you have to call this a Mad Max saga and he only has a throwaway cameo, look, I get it, it's not about him, we're expanding the world, but who asked for this, sincerely? because it doesn't really offer anything new. And I wanna see Mad Max do Mad Max stuff. This movie retreads a lot of what we already know about Furiosa. It doesn't really give us any more insight to the things that we couldn't have picked up from or inferred from from Fury Road. Um, we don't spend any longer in the green place other than like a minute. See her formative years, we just go from her being a child to being the Imperator. She has zero relationship with albino Darth Vader. I can't remember his name right now. When in Fury Road, it's implied that they had this like terrible history together and they really don't. Cause she says, remember me before she kills him. And it's like, what was that referring to? Cause it's not in Furiosa. And the whole like credit sequences of like re-showing Fury Road. I'm like, why? What is this whole thing? Just like a, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want because I'm a George Miller movie. Maybe. And he has every right to do that. And I was also extremely disappointed in the lack of practical effects and the visuals. There's a lot of ugly green screen CGI in this, like ugly. The King just looks so off. As well as the fact that there's not as many practical stunts. Now they are, there are stunts, don't get me wrong. And I'll get into positives in a little bit, but it's not at all at the level of previous films. And that was sad to see, cause that's like the series thing. And on top of all of that, the movie's way too long. I try to hesitate to say this about cutting things out, but we spend so much time with her as a small child that it feels like Anya Taylor-Joy barely gets anything to do in the movie. She doesn't really have much of an arc other than revenge, which, you know, cool and all. Then we get into, you know, Chris Hemsworth's character is obviously steals the show of the whole movie and he's, he's great. His performance is phenomenal. But a lot of the cool things he's supposed to do, he does off screen, we don't ever see. Some of the logical like story flowing of like, they go to this place to do this thing, but it's already been taken over but he was supposed to be super weak. How did he do it? It just doesn't ever flow as well as I think it could. And then we get into the ending with Mr. Tree thing. I was like, what is going on? Is What is this? The end I come back to showdown. And, uh, I just was baffled constantly by so many decisions. So why do I end up still saying it's a good movie? Because George Miller, despite all of these flaws, makes films like no other human being alive. There is so much energy and charisma and just general zaniness in the way that he films and edits everything that he does in the personality of the world, of the makeup, of the design of the characters, of the less is more with dialogue, of the showing rather than telling, the way the action itself is staged despite a lot of it being a CGI that I didn't want is still kinetic and tense and thrilling to watch. And I was entertained the entire time. There was characters I was rooting for and characters I was rooting against. I wanted to see this expansion. I wanted to learn more about these things when the movie started convincing me of these different factions and what was going on that sets up Fury Road's status. I don't think any of it was needed because Fury Road does such a good job on its own, but it was cool to see these things. That's what prequels exist. For. There's so much at play here but I, I say this all the time. I wonder if this would have been better as a limited series on Max where we could really dive deep into each and every character and faction across 10 episodes and get more than just shoving it into a two and a half hour movie. So I think it's a good movie. I think it's solid. I think it's a step above so many action movies with its visuals alone in terms of like the color palettes, 
uh, the cinematography when it's not CGI. It is so full of passion in every frame. You can tell he's having the time of his life making this movie. And I don't know if it was due to COVID or budget or laziness that it got to where it was a mess and he had too much creative control because it feels like someone should have stepped in and told him to rein a couple things back. And why I really feel the need to dog on it the way I am while also still saying, hey, it's good is because I see so many people saying, and if you feel this way, I respectfully, like it's cool. I just disagree. So many people saying it's perfect or near perfect or a masterpiece or better than Fury Road or that it's a 10 out of 10. If I see one more 10 out of 10 from any kind of publication, I'm gonna lose my mind because I just don't see it. It's one thing to politely disagree and not like a movie everybody will love, but it's another to be like, no, this is good, but it's not that good. Now, I'm guilty of that on the other end of the spectrum, saying a movie's way better than it has any right to be and everyone disagrees with me. Okay, that's fine. I'm here to tell you my opinion. And I did look for the good, I promise you. But this is an overlong, very, very messy, thrilling, kinetic action film that I would watch again, but ultimately I just don't think it was necessary at all. And it doesn't add anything to the franchise for me. Don't even get me started on the little map that's on her arm that she loses that is played as this big MacGuffin throughout the first half of the movie. And then doesn't matter anymore. And we'll like, what was the point of that even being in there? Uh, I'm going to get so much hate for this. So yeah, that's why Furiosa is three out of five stars. I almost could talk myself into going into more negative mid territory, like 2.5, not two stars. I almost could, but there's too much good in this. I enjoyed myself too much. It's too well staged at the good parts and the performances so well done. It's a good movie guys. It's just extremely overrated, but Hey, always look for the good.